वेलकम टू पार्टी स्ट्री Today we are going to discuss about Athenian democracy evolution and its main features Athens has a special significance in a discussion on Greek democracy due to the scope of its accomplishment In his reforms in 594 BCE Solon divided the Athenian citizens into four classes The property or wealth possessed by a citizen determined his class. Right at the top were the Pentacosia Medimni, who possessed property which yielded at least 500 Medimni, a unit for measuring the quantity of grain or its equivalent value in wine or oil. Next were the citizens whose property yielded at least 300 medimni called hippes the third category was that of owners of property yielding at least 200 medimni those belonging to this class were called the zeugitai the zeugitai were the small and middle peasants who also constituted the main strength of the athenian army and could not therefore be easily ignored Right at the bottom were Thetis who had property yielding less than 200 medimni. The Thetis were poorest class among the citizens. This class included poor peasants, artisans and the landless. Solon constituted a new council of 400 members. The new Athenian council was called Boule. The old Athenian council called Areopagus was not abolished but the boule was now the main center of political power membership of the boule was based on property qualifications and not on hereditary right which in itself was something new membership of the boule was open only to the first three classes qualifications for public offices corresponded to this fourfold division The first two classes held the principal posts including the archon ships the yugitai held minor offices the thetis only had the right to participate in meetings of the assembly despite these reforms some of the major priestly positions continued to be the monopoly of the aristocracy after the overthrow of Hippias in 510 BCE Cleisthenes carried forward democratic reforms at Athens The citizens were traditionally divided into four Ionian tribes or phylae which were kinship groups Following the reforms of Solon the political role of these tribes had been reduced but not abolished Each tribe sent 100 members to the boule The aristocracy was still able to exploit kinship ties. Cleisthenes discarded the kinship principle for grouping the citizens. The four kinship based phylae were replaced by 10 residential phylae in 507 BCE. These new phylae were based on a radically new concept. From now on the phylae to which a person belonged was determined by a place where be resided and not by his kinship ties the original tribal groupings had already been weakened during the 6th century bce because when citizenship rights were extended to some sections which had been hitherto excluded they were accommodated in the existing tribes They had no kinship ties with other members. Thomson has suggested that as a result of this problem the reform of the phylae assumed great urgency. 
The primary unit of the democratic structure established by Clisthenes was the Deme. Every citizen was first and foremost a member of a particular Deme. The Deme was the smallest geographical unit into which the polis of Athens was divided for political purposes. There were nearly 200 demes or in plural demoi in all. The demes were responsible for maintaining registers of citizens. They had their own elected governments including an assembly and officials. The local governments were headed by the demarchos or chief of the deme. Depending on the location of the demes, they were grouped together to form ten residential phyllae. There are three types of demes, coastal demes, city demes and rural demes in the interior. All the phyllae got some share of the three types of demes. This was the system of dividing phyllae into treatises or thirds. This division of phyllae into treatises balanced the resources of the phyllae. Corresponding to the reform of the phyllae, Clisthenes made changes in the composition of the bowl. The strength of the bowl was raised from 400 to 500 members. 50 members were selected from each of the 10 phyllae by draw of lots from among the demes in proportion to the population of each deme. Membership of the bowl was thrown open to all citizens including Thetis. Any citizen over the age of 30 could be a member of the bowl. Members served for one year and could be selected for a second term only after a gap. The bowl had enormous executive, judicial and administrative responsibilities. Meet every day for transacting business, collection of taxes, look after foreign relations, maintaining of ships and ports, and regulation of trade. The meetings of the assembly were guided by the bowl. Membership of the bowl was a full-time job and it has been correctly observed that only the will their citizens would had the time and leisure to serve on the council. Over a period of time the Athenian bowl came to be dominated by the more affluent sections of the citizens. By circa 450 BCE, when Pericles became the dominant figure in Athenian politics, there was definitely an attempt to restrict the access of the lower classes to political power. The Athenian assembly was called Ecclesia. All the citizens whose names were recorded in the registers of citizenship kept in the demes had the right to participate and vote in the assembly. The minimum age for membership of the Ecclesia was 18 years. Till 450 BCE it was sufficient for a person to have an Athenian father to become a citizen. In 450 BCE Pericles restricted citizenship rights to free adult males both of whose parents or mother and father were of Athenian origin. It has been estimated that during the 5th century BCE there were about 45,000 citizens in Athens. However, Andrews notes that normally about 5,000 to 6,000 citizens actually attended the meeting of the Ecclesia. The stations of Ecclesia were called by the bowl which also fixed the agenda for these meetings. The proceedings of the Ecclesia were conducted by the current presiding officer of the bowl. The chairman of the bowl was chosen on a daily basis since the council was expected to meet every day. For the sessions of the assembly, members of the Athenian Ecclesia assembled at a place called Nix or else at another location which was known as the Theatre of Dionysus. 
Incidentally, these sessions were one-day affairs. Whenever the assembly was expected to vote on something, it met in the Agora. The Agora had been traditionally associated with the meetings of the assembly. Thus, a powerful democratic system was formed in Athens and it was a result of a long evolution. This is the end of our today's discussion. Subscribe our channel for regular notification, like our video and comment, listen to our podcast episodes, follow our official Facebook page, Twitter handle and Instagram. For any query, feel free to mail us. For details, see the description.